This episode of Destructoid is brought to you by Carbonite. Coming up on Destructoid, everybody got to play Bioshock Infinite except for us. Sombrero wearing box is confirmed playable for Metal Gear Rising. And just when you thought your gaming PC was fast, here comes Crisis 3. Plus, we have prizes for you right now on Destructoid Live. Welcome to Destructoid. I'm Tara Long. And I'm Max Scoville. Happy Friday live Happy show, Friday. Max. How are you doing this I'm evening? okay. I have a little bit of a Morning, cold. afternoon. Do you? Yeah, I got a bit of a sniffle. Well, I, uh... get the hell away from me then. All right. All right. I will after the so, show. So, um, actually, before we get into the show, we have things to give away. It is a Friday live show after all. Actually, Destructoid show viewer Jorge Sanchez. The nicest man yes. on the internet. Yeah, he thanks us on Twitter for doing our yeah. jobs every week. That is so nice. Yeah, he's super nice and he donated uh, codes for the first four chapters of The Walking Dead on XBLA, which I'm going to be reviewing next week on Rev3 Games. If you want to win those codes, we have them. All you have to do is tweet. I'm watching at Detoid Show live on www.youtube.com slash Detoid for a chance to win hashtag The Walking Dead on XBLA. Make sure you include those W's in there so people can actually click on the link. Then at the end of the show, we will tally the results and announce a winner. And do not be misled by my use of the word tally because no matter how many times you enter, you will only be entered once. So. so you just use the wrong word yeah, wrongfully. I do that sometimes. Jeepers, Tara. All right, speaking of that, let's get into the news. So earlier this week, our producer Zach and our new video game overlord, Adam Sessler, went down to LA to check out Bioshock Infinite, which normally I would be super jealous of, but Zach brought me back this Elizabeth doll. So it's practically like I was there, right? You know, I would say that that's an action figure but she doesn't have anything like a weapon. Okay, or, I was going to call dress. her a figurine, and I know, then you I know, got mad I know, at me I'm and agree, told me I'm to call her a doll. I'm agreeing with you. That is a doll. Thanks she's for got, ruining she's the doll for me. She's got a soft goods Thanks. skirt. Yeah, she does. Yeah. It's velvet. I, I don't think, know if it's or real imitation velvet. velvet or something. Anyway, first piece of news about Bioshock Infinite. This might not come as a shock to anyone, uh, but the game has been pushed back another month. It is now slated for a March 26th release. Come on, you know I could not do that. Uh, which means that Ken Levine will now have more time to prepare for my big romantic birthday blowout bash, which is what I'm calling it. AKA Kiss a Palooza 2013. Yeah, that's right, we're gonna make out hardcore. Um, you. So <laughs> on to the good stuff. Uh, in addition to Zack and Adam, Destructoid's Alistair Pinsoff also got to go hands-on with the first three hours of the game. He's a huge fan of the Bioshock series, so it's natural that he might be a tad over-discerning. But according to him, Bioshock Infinite is everything that Bioshock was, but better. His words, strong ones at that. Even without its final layer of polish and some pretty nasty texture pop in on the Xbox 360 version, he still said that Infinite was the most beautiful game he has ever seen and that the incredible amount of detail that they've put into the city of Columbia actually makes the game kind of look next gen, which is interesting. Uh, Story-wise, I know that uh, one, one thing people have been wondering about is Elizabeth and what her role in the game is going to be. Apparently, she serves a few different purposes. Uh, during combat, she'll be able to help you out by just kind of tossing ammo at you and health. She's also able to open rifts, which can summit tur summon turrets or cover. And then other times, she'll just kind of be exploring with you, encouraging you to, you know, check out interesting things in the city or giving you money if she happens to find any. So the perfect woman. Yeah, seriously. Just throwing stuff at you and money. Yeah. Yeah. Money. So she's not just um, a support character who follows you around, you know, she's actually useful both in and outside of combat. Um, speaking of combat, oddly, Alistair's only complaint with the game was with the combat, which he says is actually too good. Apparently that is a thing that happens. Um, he said it kind of creates a little bit of a dissonance when you exit out of a big fight and go back into the sort of exploring mode. Um, it can be a little bit of a shock, as they say. Uh, but the combat's also a ton faster than any of the previous Bioshock games, uh, which you can see here because of the skylines that they have all over the city. So there's a lot of roller vertical exploration coaster, in combat as well. In, in, wow, I know. roller coaster tycoon. It's like the typhoon. best parts. I don't know. Um, so yeah, he really enjoyed his playtime. You guys can read his full article over on Destructoid.com and also. 
Also, Adam Sessler put up a video of his playthrough on our Rev3 Games channel. Both excellent previews. I highly recommend watching and or reading them if you are at all interested in this game because it looks incredible. Yeah. And if you feel like, feel like leaving any comments where you're like rude to the people writing and, uh, you know, being in the video of, the, of those previews because you haven't played the game yourself, by all means, be as mean as you like because we feel the same way. I want to play that game. But don't be mean to Adam. No, no, be we especially like mean to all of the people, everybody who have played the game, because we haven't. We're on your side here. Uh, yeah, and if we didn't have enough reason to hate Adam and Zach um, for, for seeing Bioshock Infinite, they also saw Metal Gear Rising Revengeance, and they brought back a bunch of gameplay footage with it. And when I asked Zach what he took away from it, he said that I'm probably going to like it because it's stupid and ridiculous, just like me and also that it has some stealthy parts, which uh, I guess was kind of a surprise. Um, the first video we got has Raiden sort of sneaking through a sewer and fighting these, uh, by sneaking I mean running, uh, and then fighting these big uh, cyborg guys who look kind of like gorillas and, uh, you know, they've got these strong arms and he has to sort of, well, he has to cut them with his sword because that's what this game is about, cutting people with a sword. Uh, what's weird though is that uh, even after you cut off their limbs, they continue to fight. Uh, that's just a pair of legs that he's fighting right there. Uh, so this is, if you've ever wanted a good Monty Python game, here you go, it's the Black Knight. Um, after that we get a little bit of, at the, a little bit of a look at the weapon cu uh, customization system. This is for like this whole is, is cybernetic augmentations and stuff. But hey, instead of showing that off and how it would affect gameplay, here he is as, uh, in a sombrero, because... Why not? I don't, I don't know. Why, why the hell Do you hell need not? a reason for a sombrero? I'm, I'm in support of this. I don't need a reason for a sombrero. I'll wear one right now. Uh, oh and then of course God, there's wow. some, some stealth. I'm wearing a sombrero in, in case you're just tuning in. Uh, then of course we get a little bit of stealth, which isn't quite as complicated as we, okay, it's not really stealth. It's more just running towards somebody who's looking in another direction. And then suddenly he's in a box, but the box is wearing a sombrero too. Um, so if you didn't want to buy this game before, why would you not want to buy it now? Because he's the box is wearing a hat like this one. I think that's funny. Um, the other clip, of course, is of Raiden fighting a really evil-looking Metal Gear Ray, which uh, it's actually the fight scene that they showed in the uh, the initial CG trailer that made everybody go, "This looks weird and kind of stupid." But seeing it with the actual gameplay, uh, it actually I think it kind of works. You know, it's it's ridiculous and it's over the top. But let's face it, you're playing as a cyborg ninja who can run around really fast and has a magic sword. It's not magic, it's just it's just really strong, and he's cutting up missiles, and he's fighting this evil Metal Gear Ray, and uh, I, don't, I don't know, I'm okay, but I'm okay with this game. Like the more I see of it, the more I'm I'm looking forward to it. And I mean, after trudging through Metal Gear Solid 4, which which was which was an interesting game, it was it was good, but I sat through a lot of Otacon's PowerPoint presentations, and there were a lot of old guys who were delivering speeches and then coughing and then falling over. I'm really okay with just a stupid, fast, loud Metal Gear game where you can dress up like a mariachi guy and stab robots with a sword. So. Yeah, I there, like all of those things. There Literally is everything. My book listed. report on Metal Gear Rising Revenge. <laughs> that game is so much more appealing to me now that I know that you can play as a cardboard box. You could be a box wearing a Mexican hat. Sold. Day one <laughs> purchase. So this week I had the pleasure of attending EA's annual New Year's Eve showcase, which I realized is a bit premature since it's still the beginning of December, but they included tiny bottles of champagne in our gift bag. So how am I supposed to argue with that? My hands are tied. Now, one of the games I was there to check out was Crisis 3, and I'm gonna be uploading an interview shortly that I did with one of the devs from Crytek. That's gonna be on our Rev3 Games channel, but for now, I just wanna reiterate how gorgeous this game is. Um, they had both the single player and the hunter, hunter multiplayer mode on display. The hunter mode was running on Xbox and the single player was on PC. I know I'm preaching to the choir here, guys, but if you can afford it, buy this game on PC because it looks literally a thousand times better. That's not even an exaggerate, exaggeration. It's like That's literally math. a thousand. Yeah, they've revamped a lot of the technology in CryEngine 3, so apparently now it's capable of real-time self-shadowing, meaning you can actually see individual blades of grass move and sway in response to things like, you know, players moving through it, wind, explosions. Um, it's absolutely incredible. And now it has a release date, which is the other big piece of news. Um, February 19th in North America for PC and consoles. February 21st in Europe, this will be coming out. Along with that news, we also learned that Crytek is going to be teaming up with filmmaker Albert Hughes, who uh, worked on a bunch of movies from the 90s. He co-produced Menace to Society. Uh, he also worked on From Hell, a bunch of other more recent stuff. He and Crytek are going to be working together to create a video series called The Seven Wonders of Crisis 3, which is going to use in-game assets to highlight each of the seven wonders, which are the different environments in Crisis 3. It'll also talk a little bit about weapons and general gameplay. So. 
The first episode of that will be airing on December 12th, I believe. So I wonder if this is gonna be like more of a thing that happens now. Like after Forward Unto Dawn, I think that really made people realize that you can actually make good video series like that yeah. based on games. I think so too. I think that um, video game sort of video material works better as like a short short form media than it yeah, does as definitely. like movie adaptations. As yeah. we, uh, this isn't quite as cinematic as Forward Unto Dawn, but yeah. it looks. Also, it looks it's it's cool because as as a you know a game engine, the Cry Engine is incredible, but it, you know that's also puts a huge strain on whatever technical. I mean, can yeah. it run Crisis is a is a freaking meme. So yeah. it's like if you're actually using it to make uh, to make machinima, to make you know video game videos, it's uh, it's interesting to see because they're getting yeah. a director to direct a machinima. That's what's happening yep. here, which is crazy. Um, so February nineteenth. Yeah, I actually excited. played a bit of that too. It's uh, that's a really pretty game. Yeah. Um, I think that they I think that they kind of scared some people off with Crisis Two, which was definitely kind of streamlined for consoles. Yeah. But this is definitely not. Uh, it's they're not skimming on the on the PC. No, version. not this at all. Is, they yeah. announced those PC specs last week. That is a there powerful a lot powerful game. Um, so as exciting as it is to cover all the big new games coming out and the fact that they have really pretty grass in them and stuff like that and sombreros and boxes, one of my favorite things to talk about just is general gaming industry weirdness. Uh, the stuff that happens that kind of leaves us all kind of simultaneously scratching our heads and pointing at laughing at the same time. Um, today's newest weirdness comes by way of Nintendo's European Wii U eShop, which is a terrible series of words to say. Uh, and it's apparently being run by somebody's mom. Uh, recently, a bunch of reports surfaced from around the internet of European users being unable to purchase 18, 18 rated games, that's like the metric version of M ratings, um, until after 11 p.m. Of course, it took a bit of experimentation to figure that much out because any attempt to download a game like, uh, you know, Zombie U, for instance, during normal business hours was greeted with sort of a generic error message, which doesn't really, it's not telling you that you can't do it after a certain hour, but uh, uh, it seems to be that that was the case. You, it, w the, the, the thing that's stupid here is the Wii U has parental controls, and this is a thing that applies to everybody, regardless of whether or not they're on a child's account. Um, now, Nintendo hasn't actually issued any statements on the matter, but it seems that this restriction is sort of sort of following Germany's television laws, which only allow mature content to air after a particular hour. Um, now, needless to say, rules that make sense for regular television don't exactly make sense for, you know, downloads yeah. on the internet and uh, you know having adult stuff relegated to a late night slot is pretty dumb because old people I don't know if you knew this but old people go to bed early Nintendo I'm 26 years old I go to bed at 9 30 p.m. most nights of the week I am not gonna stay up all, of, all the way until 11 just to download your violent Wii U games <laughs> never mind the fact that I don't own a Wii U or live in Europe I'm outraged, and, and that won't change. You have a um, right to be. I'm, I'm outraged as a gamer. In any case, I know we have a lot of European viewers, and some of you guys are actually probably staying up late to um, watch this, this terrible broadcast that you're watching right now. Uh, are any of you guys having this problem at all? Have you, have you gotten a Wii U? Have you tried to uh, you know, download the violent, angry games? Yeah. Uh, let us know in the chat. We've got, we've got our, our man Nick in there keeping, keeping tabs on who's saying what. Uh, in other Wii U eShop news, I hate, why am I, why did I write those Wii U eShop? It just sounds like gibberish. Anyway, in other news re related to that thing, the deluxe digital promotion is now underway. So if you bought one of the deluxe black Wii U's, you can now earn back 10% of the cost of any games purchased from the eShop or through retailer codes in Nintendo points. So, you know, if you can overlook the fact that digital distribution should be at least 10% cheaper than physical media to begin with, Sort of like you're getting a great deal. Hmm. Yeah. Dirigius, user Dirigius says, a gamer knows not the time nor the day. <laughs> Sounds yeah. so or, wise. Or what you are a wise sage, yeah. Dirigius. Yeah. Um, it's true though. Yeah. It's weird that they did that. Nintendo. I, I love how they just do these things and then don't explain them at all and then don't bother responding to I like press I feel like they, they just kind of, they're, they leave like the intern running things and they're just like, we'll yeah. be back, um, you know, the numbers are on the fridge, there's money for pizza on the counter, yeah. just we'll be if back anything in a week. goes wrong, don't tell us. And then they just leave and there's like some guy sitting there and he's just like, and then all of a sudden nobody can download like 18 rated games. Yeah, like, it's sad. Uh, so uh, why don't we take a second to thank our sponsor and then we can talk about the VGAs. The VGAs. If you value what's on your computer, which you should because we're on it right now as you're watching this, then it might be time to invest in Carbonite. Carbonite is the best online backup software because it automatically and safely backs up your pictures and other files without you even having to think about it. Gone are the days of devastating hard drive crashes and accidental file deletions. With Carbonite, you can rest easy knowing that all your home or small business files are safe and secure offsite. Over 1 million customers trust Carbonite to protect their files with plans starting at only $59 a year. There is no reason not to at least try. 
Start your free trial at Carbonite.com with the offer code Destructoid and you will get two bonus months if you decide to buy. Again, that is Carbonite.com and the offer code for two bonus months absolutely free is Destructoid.com. All right, back to the show. So in case you've forgotten, which would be totally understandable, the VGAs are tonight at 6 p.m. Pacific time on Spike TV. Oh, jeepers. Seeing as how these are sadly one of the more legitimate award shows in this industry, publishers will typically wait until tonight to make any final end of the year announcements that haven't been made yet. And since tonight is actually the 10th anniversary of the VGAs, I'm sure we can expect even more excitement than usual. Uh, for starters, Samuel L. Jackson will be hosting the awards again this year. He hosted back in 2000. Seven. Um, this should hopefully mitigate, you know, a lot of the poorly delivered jokes followed by crushing awkward silence that we're used to seeing at the VGAs. This he's, should. I will say he's. I've seen him. I've seen him do a few like emceeing gigs that are that are sort of BS written. Mm -hmm. I saw him do a panel at Comic Con for Snakes on a Plane, and he's. I think he kind of is good at, at being kind of a smart ass when he knows yeah. that he's got bad lines. Yeah, it's well, the, the, it's the writing that's bad. It's not the actors. You know, Neil Patrick Harris is hilarious as shit, and like even he had some really. Yeah. Bad, awkward moments. I think in they there. should make the writers do it. They should just go out. We write yeah, all our lines. Sometimes they're bad, but you know. I'm sure, Samuel L. Jackson. We is try a huge our darndest, gamer. darn it. Um, so, as for game reveals and the like, um, we can expect to get new trailers for Tomb Raider, Bioshock Infinite, Gears of War Judgment, South Park Stick of Truth, which I keep forgetting is a thing that's happening, and many more. Um, Naughty Dog is also going to be uh, unveiling a new trailer where they're going to be unveiling a new character that we know nothing about yet. And of course, there will be some musical performances by Linkin Park and Tenacious D, which uh, I guess goes to show that not much has changed over the past decade. <laughs> Wow, yeah. yeah. Um, wow. It really is a 10th anniversary show. Um, so if you have absolutely nothing better to do tonight and you want to tune in, you can always watch the awards on Spike TV or on Xbox Live where they're going to be streaming. And of course, you'll be able to watch at spike.com, gametrailers.com. Best of all, though, the Podtoid crew, Jim Sterling, Jonathan Holmes, and Conrad Zimmerman, all from Destructoid, are going to be live streaming their reactions to the VGAs, which will undoubtedly be better than anything you could see at the actual VGAs. So um, I encourage you to tune in and watch that. That's going to be happening at twitch.tv slash destructoid, and it will be a beautiful thing, I am sure. Um, of course, by the time this episode airs, not live, but when the recording goes up, a lot of the big surprises will probably have already been revealed at the VGAs. But guess what, we're gonna rampantly speculate anyway because it's our job, and also we have like 10 minutes to kill. <laughs> five minutes, five, All right. five to 10 minutes. Yes. So um, let us know in the comments what you guys wanna see out of tonight's VGAs. Could be celebrity cameos, gameplay trailers for games that you really like, new game announcements, whatever it is, let us know in the comments. Personally, I would love to see a rehashing of the Angry Birds demonstration that NPH did at the VGAs back in 2010, except Instead of a live chicken, you do it with Samuel L. Jackson to celebrate the release of Angry Birds Star Wars. It's what if, perfect. What if somebody in a big chicken outfit came out and he was in like a Mace Windu outfit and they tried to put him in the slingshot and he was like, oh no, I'm Samuel L. Jackson, get out of here, you stupid bird, and then they I'll pushed take him. It. I mean, I'm just trying to think in the mindset of no, one and of I like writers. that you're being yeah. creative. It's a throwback to the VGA's 2011 mm, yeah. or 10 or 10. whatever there was. The ones uh, that we went cares. to, the 2010 ones. Ugh, um, yeah. Also, Xbox 720, which I realize is the chances of actually happening are incredibly slim. But if it did end up getting announced, wouldn't it be awesome if no one else predicted it except me, and I was actually right for once, and all of my hopes and dreams came true, and then I got married in a castle? Wow. Wow. Girl can dream. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think the Xbox 720, um, our producer Zach really thinks that that's going to He also wants to get married in the castle, too, I think. But uh, I, I don't know. I don't think Microsoft would do that. I feel like they want they want to make a huge splash when they unveil something like that. And they really want to have a chance to like show off what they're unveiling and kind of give it. You know, They're either going to have true. like uh, do it at one of their own press conferences, whether it's at GDC or E3, or they're going to have like a big standalone event where there's like purple curtains yeah. and they're like, everyone join us. I feel like it for is a more very likely. special Microsoft announcement. We're like, oh jeepers, what could it possibly be? A new Forza game? And then it's like, no, just kidding. It's uh, you know, yeah. a new. GDC is is definitely the more likely of events. But if they wanted to just like put that in people's minds, now would be a good time to do it because. If you announce it now, you know, when people are clamoring for a Wii yeah. U, they might be they might be like, well, maybe I should wait for you the know, next would be, Xbox. You know what would be really crazy is if they unveiled a new controller 
that is like like a wacky new controller. Maybe maybe a new controller that has a uh, smart glass built into it, much like the Wii U gamepad, or the Surface. which happens to be compatible with the current Xbox as well as with you know PCs because they are they're trying to do kind of yeah. uh, intercompatibility. But hey, maybe that would be you know getting a look at the controller of the next system. Because mm, I mean, maybe. you know, the, the the Xbox is basically under the hood. It's it's pretty much a PC, and it, you can take your Xbox controller and plug it into your PC, and it's. I mean, if they can make that kind of magic happen, I mean, probably the next one is just going to be like an extra thumbstick on there. I, I don't yeah. know. Technology. Microsoft, you me. should hire me. I'm a scientist. Um, as for like game announcements, uh, what if we got a teaser for Fallout 4? <sighs> That would be nice. Uh, Skyrim got announced back at the uh, 2000. It did. Yeah. I, I, there's going to be at least one big game announcement that nobody has predicted yet. It's just a question of which game. Yeah. Fallout 4, I could see actually happening, although Elder Scrolls Online would probably be higher yeah, priority still probably for the Bethesda right and now. No one wants or it. Doom. Doom 4 would be cool. And then, of okay. course, there's. Uh, I, it wouldn't surprise me that much if we saw uh, some GTA 5 gameplay. Like an oh. actual gameplay demo. If they were like, everybody, welcome Dan Hauser, and everybody comes out, and everybody, like, you know, all the celebrities sort of look around, like they don't know who that is, and then, you know, they play a demo where it shows the jumping back and forth between the characters. Wishful but, thinking. Hey, I'm sure Rockstar would have uh, announced that. I, I hear it takes them like six months to create and release a game trailer. Uh, let's answer some questions here. Um, we have questions? We have a lot of questions, oh, actually. Uh, and we difficult. have a contest winner, which I will announce in just a second. Uh, okay, so relating uh, to Bioshock Infinite. Oh, that's a good one. Baza3291 asked, is there any horse in Bioshock Infinite? Do you mean like heroin or just like the animal horse or like the basketball game? There, there are mechanical horses, I am told. Oh. Um, I don't know about, is that like a euphemism for drugs or something? I don't know horses where you were going with heroin, that. Horses is heroin, yeah. No, that's a, um, let's that's see. what they call it. it. Max, if Bioshock Infinite is awful, what do you think this would do to the prospects of future Zeppelin-based industries? Industries, ask the Bishna. Wow, um, nothing, because nobody makes Zeppelins. They make video games, though. I don't know. John Perdue said, with regards to Metal Gear Rising, any game that doesn't feature sombreros is fucking horseshit. I agree. <laughs> yeah, we need I more sombreros I completely agree, and yes, somebody asked if that was the sombrero I was wearing on that one episode of Casual Friday, and it is. A slutty sombrero. We have sombreros like all over the office. They're awesome. I love um, sombreros. Damn it, Chris Nine asked, should I buy a Far Cry 3 or wait for Crisis 3 to shoot things with a bow? I'm gonna say buy Far Cry 3. You know, it's like you'll have a good three months before uh, Crisis 3 comes out. Why not? Yeah. Don't you have money for both? Figure out how to get 20 bucks a month. Go steal money something. from your grandma or yeah. something. Don't do that. You could probably Please. make that much panhandling during lunch at school easy. I did that. Yep. Seriously. Asking for quarters, dancing for nickels. All right, VGAs. Uh, a lot of people are just really kind of lamenting how terrible they are. It's funny. Everyone everyone says that, and then I think they still tune in anyway. Yeah. And everyone's just like, why am I watching this? Because you want to see the really cool trailers of the new games that are going to come out. That and also, like, being on Twitter while you're not watching the VGAs during the VGAs is unbearable because you just... <sighs> Although I guess it's it's kind of a good cool. replacement for watching the VGAs, but you still part. want to feel like you're part of the party. Yeah. Um, Sean Nelson asked about the VGAs. What they couldn't book Limp Biscuit. Ooh. <laughs> wow. Well, that's a good they, one. I think Limp Biscuit just broke up Did again really? or something. Yeah. Does that mean Fred Durst is yeah. single and ready to mingle? Uh. Oh, I'm just kidding. Oh. I can't believe I Who's said that. Who won the contest? Um, contest winners, yes. Uh, so for Walking Dead, we have Light and Dark Love. Good. On Twitter. Very yeah. progressive. Good good handle, Congratulations. yes. Congratulations. Um, we will get in touch with you through either Twitter or YouTube, one of the two. Twitter. Twitter. I am told in my ear hole. Uh -huh. um, and yeah, thanks you guys for watching and for entering our contest. And so many thanks to Jorge Sanchez for donating those codes. We really, really appreciate it. Um, and like I said, watch out for my Walking Dead review on Rev3 Games next week because it's coming. It's going to be a good one. And on that note, uh, if you don't have anything else to add, I think it might be time to wrap this thing up. Let's go watch the VGAs, everybody. No, let's not. Uh, but you can go follow us on Twitter, where we might be tweeting about them. Uh, I am Tara Longest. He is Max Scoville. And the show is Detoid Show on there, as you probably know. Uh, have a safe and wonderful weekend. Enjoy the VGAs in whatever capacity you enjoy them in, whether it's high or drunk or passed out or something, and uh, we'll see you back here on Monday. Be safe, kids. Don't do the drugs. Take it easy.